G'day, I'm Paul, this is my cannon. Today we're going to install a radio. I'm going to be mounting this on my bull bars. Probably up the front here, I think. So, off to super cheap auto to buy a bull bar mount that didn't come with the kit. I think it's the only thing that didn't come with the kit. 55, I've got 50 mil bull bars, so near enough. A company in Auckland called Four Wheel Drive Supply Co. had these on special. Uh, they imported some, they had a limited supply. I jumped on it while I could. They've been on my watch list for ages. It's the GME XRS Connect XRS 370, so it's the one with the metal um, case. For the radio itself so the 330 this case is actually plastic the 370 the case is metal uh, the 370 pack also comes with a bit of extra fruit like this you know magnetic um, handpiece holder that you can put on the dash uh, the one thing I had to buy extra was a bull bar mount for the antenna so i mounted the antenna last night um and you can see here you go i've bought a bull bar mount from super cheap auto for i think it was 30 bucks i don't know it wasn't very much antenna's mounted i'll give, be, give you a bit of a tour of how i've mounted it let me show you in the engine bay so just behind the battery Way down there you can see a rubber grommet. Let's see if I can get some light on it in the camera. Right? There's a rubber grommet that goes through the firewall. Comes out behind the glove box. It's a pretty tight squeeze. Take the bottom of the glove box off. You can see it way up in there. Let's see if I can get some light on it. There is a rubber grommet up there. This is now the third cable that I punched through this rubber grommet. Get some heavy wire like this. This is called catenary wire. I'm going to push it through. Tape the cable onto it. So, there you go. There's my bull bar mount from Super Cheap Auto. Um, I did have to trim off the top. Um, like the thread came out here, about another 20 mil of the U-bolts cut them off with a hacksaw no big deal um, but w when they were there it wouldn't allow me to mount the GME antenna through this mount so simple fix um, I've drilled a small hole through the radiator grill big enough to fit the plug through so the cable could go through easy but you know this is RF stuff that you're dealing with so you don't want to chop the plug off and have to refix it the cable comes down behind my battery and I'll just grab a torch. Cable comes down behind my battery and heads down towards a grommet that goes through the firewall into behind the glove box. Alright, once the cable comes out of the glove box, which is up there somewhere, let's see if I can get in and show you maybe. So, oh, no, because I've reassembled it, sorry. So the bottom of the glove box comes out with a couple of screws here and here and then you've got access to the grommet uh, the kick tape panel here pops off pretty simple um, I've taken the uh, sill off and run the cable for the antenna down through the sill and then in the back all I've done is drilled a wee hole at the bottom of the seat belt column and my cable comes out here and you now I've threaded it nicely and here it is with a bit of tape on it protecting it until I'm ready to plug it in. So there's probably two ways you can wire this thing up in terms of your 12 volt battery. There's pros and cons for both ways. So you can wire it up with permanent 12 volts. That means when your truck is off your radio still is usable. And maybe there's a use case for that. 
I don't know, maybe you want to turn off your truck and still have communications working. Um, I've decided that I'm not going to do that, that I'm going to wire it up to accessory power so that the radio only works when the truck is going. So I'll walk you through what I'm doing. So because I've done lots of stuff on my truck before, and specifically what I'm talking about is my subwoofers in my back seat, I've actually already got accessory power and tw fused 12 volts going directly to the battery here. So this blue cable that you can see in this loom is accessory power. When the truck turns on, that accessory power also sends a signal to turn the subwoofers on. So I'm going to use that accessory power to power a relay. Um, and here I've got, this is fused 12 volts that goes directly to the battery. I've already um, chopped into it to power my relay powered reverse lights at the rear. So this cable goes all the way to the back of the truck to power my reverse lights. I'm going to do the same, I'm going to use that 12 volts to power my radio and I'm going to use that accessory power to turn on the relay and I'm actually going to mount the radio under the passenger seat tucked away under there somewhere So if you don't know how a relay works, I'll give you a wee tour This is a relay, it costs not very much money um, It looks like that if we flip it over, there's some labels on the bottom. I'll turn it around so it's the right way around. See, the two outer pins are labeled 85 and 86. You connect your accessory power across 85 and 86. So when the accessory power is turned on, that switch closes and turns on the main power that you connect between 87 and 30. So I'm going to have 12 volts from the battery coming into 87 and 12 volts from 30 going directly to the radio and then I'm going to have accessory power coming from probably the dash you know in my case the subwoofers into 86 and then accessory power going off to doing whatever it needs to be doing already so the accessory power is just a pass through switch what this allows you to do is deliver a whole bunch more you know a lot more amperage of 12 volts to a device that means my radio will be connectly, directly connected to the battery once the accessory power turns on. So I bought this from JCAR. I'm pretty sure they're under 20 bucks. Um, they're a wonderful device. I use them on my headlights. I use them on my reverse lights. I'm going to use them on my radio. Basically anything that's electrified that I only want to turn on when I turn the car on, I chuck one of these in. So progress report. I've discovered that the accessory power that I have in the back seat isn't 12 volts, it's only 10 volts. It comes from my head unit and its purpose is to turn on the subwoofers. So it provides enough power to turn the subwoofers on. It doesn't provide enough power to close a relay switch. So currently the radio is wired up to permanent 12 volts. Um, it does have a power switch on it, so here it is. Um, I've mounted the little, you know, plug here, so you know you can unplug it if you want to put it away when you, on a day-to-day -day basis or whatever. And now it doesn't want to turn on. There we go. But it does seem to work, you know. Hit the scan button, see what finds. I found something on channel 75 before. So it's working. Um, not how I want it to work. So, so I will fix the 12 volt accessory power problem in the future. I'll get a relay wired in under there. Uh, but in the meantime, I have a working GME radio well it's the next day this is taking way longer than what I expected so in the process of wiring and up to accessory power I think I've blown my line output converter because my line output converter is now 
not got any electricity out of it I'll show you what it's down in my kick panel so here's my line output converter so the see if I can prop my torch up so this is power in from accessory power and this blue wire is accessory power out to go and turn on the subwoofers well for whatever reason that's not working anymore so I've run in another accessory power down to the back to the subwoofers to turn them on so this bit seems to be working this bit doesn't no idea had me stumped for a few hours far out I've got 10 volts going down here weird eh anyway I've got regular old accessory power going down there now turning the subs on that's good let's have a look at the back a bit messy I just need to trim some lengths of cables but here we go I've got my accessory power coming in here from up the front I've got accessory power feeding the radio which is tucked in under here nice and tidy just shine a light down there so that's all out of the way so accessory power to the radio accessory power to the subwoofer and this goes all the way back up the front so whatever broke during the process of this install I have now fixed as for mounting the handheld unit it comes with this cute little magnetic thing right pop it on my knee here magnetic on the back simple right well you know modern day blooming plastics and whatever inside interiors nothing sticks to this like you use the stickiest tape doesn't stick to it I do suspect that's where the airbag comes out so I probably shouldn't stick anything to it but I've got a plan let me show you so I had a little bit of thin black steel just regular or mild steel that I cut to this weird shape and I've painted it's not fully dry yet so I'm not going to screw it on yet but my plan is to either screw that in the dash there or screw that in the dash there and then I can put my cutesy magnetic thing like right there so if I wanted to I could do that and I think that'll work out fine and here is the final piece of the puzzle so that piece of metal that I've cut to shape painted screwed into the dash here used a tiny little bolt to bolt the magnetic mount to the metal it's pretty strong but then it doesn't take a lot of weight and it should be out of the way and of course I fired the truck up and the radio immediately starts super happy with that man that's cool well it's a couple of days later it's Tuesday I spent all week installing that radio far out took way longer than I expected anyway here I am sitting in front of my computer piecing together a video for you guys uh, got any questions hit me up in the comments the radio runs sweet it's got awesome range compared to the handheld radios and I do admit a little while ago maybe a year ago I said to you guys in internet land not to worry about vehicle mounted radios that a handheld mounted radio would be fine well a handheld radio mount a handheld radio is fine but I've got one thing to say about handheld radios batteries you are constantly fighting with the battery it goes flat in the most inappropriate times when it starts to go flat you get weird connectivity and signal issues pain in the ass I will still have a handheld so that I can walk around outside of the truck and talk to people or maybe I have a spotter that want, that has a handheld and I can talk to them through the truck radio while they're outside guiding me still a good device to have uh, but the truck mounted radio definitely way cooler so that's me truck radio installed 
Uh, I'm super happy. Uh, I will probably post a link to Four Wheel Drive Supply Co. where I bought it from. They were awesome. They communicated really quickly about my purchase, about where it was, about where it was, when it was arriving in New Zealand, and when it was coming to me. So, you know, great work, guys. Uh, cool. Got any questions? Hit me up.